Much of my childhood video gaming experience was defined by two computers, the Apple II and the Commodore 64. Last August, I learned about a Kickstarter for a book entitled The Story of the Commodore 64 in Pixels. I knew I wanted to contribute. In fact, I ended up contributing more than I have for any other project, at a level that earned me a brand new C64 game, Tiger Claw, on a cartridge manufactured exclusively for backers of the project. Only 77 copies ended up being made. Today, I got mine in the mail, so let's check it out. In addition to being the only copies of the game available on cartridge, apparently this Kickstarter exclusive version has a larger game map, revised physics, another game hidden as an easter egg, although I haven't found it, and two additional game modes, versus and training, which is essentially a survival mode. There were several nice bonuses included in the package with the game. Postcards, stickers, and a poster I didn't know I was going to get. Inside the game's nice clamshell case is a label with my name and the limited run number. Mine is number 32 of 77. There's a pen with the game's character on it, a color manual, and of course, the shiny red cartridge. If you're familiar with the Commodore 64 but you don't recognize mine, this is the Commodore 64C, which came out later in the C64's life cycle. It's designed to look a little more like a Commodore 128, which actually sold terribly. Uh, and it even has a matching 1541 drive, but I didn't bother hooking that up since, obviously, I don't need that to play a cartridge game. Okay, let's fire it up. Few cartridge games were actually released on the C64 in my experience. Floppy disks were much cheaper to manufacture and sell. And the benefits of having the game on a cartridge are singular but worth it. No waiting for the game to load, which in those days took an eternity. I'm really impressed with Tiger Claw. They've pulled off a graphical quality I didn't know was possible on this hardware. The number of colors and detail in the tiny sprites is amazing. They even managed somehow to render graphics in the border region of the screen, which is something I don't remember ever seeing in a Commodore 64 game. I guess programmers have discovered how to tease out even more from this little powerhouse over the last 30 years. On that note, it's an interesting experience to play what's essentially a modern game on this old system. For example, when I started playing and got hit by an enemy, I expected to die immediately because that's just how action games were back then. As it turns out, you have a health meter. I didn't expect to collect new abilities that let me backtrack Metroidvania style and reach areas that weren't accessible to me earlier. Even concepts like the wall jump and the double jump seem anachronistic in a Commodore 64 game, but they're definitely welcome. The game's not without bugs, however. I managed to punch this green oni through a wall, trapping me there without a way to kill him, which was required to open the door that would let me leave, so I had to reboot the system and start over. Still, I'm really enjoying it. The difficulty isn't too punishing, and I think with a bit of practice I should be able to finish it. I think the Commodore 64 was more revolutionary than anybody under 40 probably realizes, but as a kid I never would have imagined being able to buy a new game for it in the year 2016. That's a really cool thing to see. I've put links to the guy who made the game and to the people who published it in the comments in case you want to check out what they have to offer or see how you can play Tiger Claw yourself. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.